Come on, he wants to hear your voice. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, that's it. Lift up your voice. Come on, tell your flesh it's time to wake up and praise the Lord. Come on, tell your flesh it's time to wake up and lift up the name of Jesus. Awake, awake, O Zion. Awake, awake, O Zion. Come on, that's it. Come on, that's it. Come on, step into your prayer closet this morning. Come on, step into your prayer closet. Lift up your voice. Forget about your neighbor. Forget about who's around you. Lift up your voice and magnify the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, if you believe it, come on, put those hands together. Just begin to magnify him. Come on, I feel something unique this morning. Come on, begin to magnify him. Come on, saints, come on, begin to magnify him. Come on, lift him up. Come on, somebody get excited this morning. Somebody get happy this morning. Come on. Come on, get happy about what God is getting ready to do in your life. For there is no day like today. There's no time like right now. Come on, praise him in your new season. Magnify him in your new season. Glorify him in your new day. Yes, Lord. And the Lord shall deliver with a shout. And the Lord shall deliver. Come on, where's your shout? Where's your shout? Where's your shout? Come on, that's it. And the Lord shall deliver with your shout. Listen. Ooh. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, there's a wave that's going to hit the building today. There's a wave of glory that's going to hit this building today. He just waited for you to tune into the right frequency. I said, there's a wave, a floodgate that's going to be open, that's going to hit this building today. If you can make the right noise, the right pitch, the right frequency. Have your way, Holy Ghost. Have your way, Holy Ghost. Listen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hold up, Baba Shatana Bahaya. We follow you today, Holy Ghost. Not our agenda, but your agenda today. My spirit was bubbling with so much expectation that I could barely sleep all last night because I had such expectation of what God was going to do for his people. I wish I had some help here today.
Am I the only one that had expectation and couldn't even rest last night because you just felt something turning in your spirit all night long? Like the Holy Ghost was telling you, today's your turn. Are you? I don't know about you, but I feel today's my turn today. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, today's my turn. Now listen, I, I want you to do something very simple, but very quickly. And at first I said, Lord, is this what you want me to do? He said, tell the people to do this. I want you to get a sheet of paper and I want you to write your unsaved loved ones. Because we going after them this morning. Oh, I wish I had some help here today. I just need about 12 crazy believers like I'm crazy that, that got enough faith to do some crazy stuff. I said, we going after your unsaved. If you don't have no paper, borrow some paper. Make you some paper. But you can't miss this. Once you finish writing it down and everyone's finished, I want you to pass it to the end, to your right, to the end. And we call the names today because something special is going to happen this morning. My God, help us here today, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. By the time you get back home, Okay, I got a couple of people in the back. I said, by the time you get back home today, you're not going to find the same thing that was there when you left. For I keep hearing the Holy Ghost say, I brought you in this place to do a new thing. I say, you see, God always reserves a remnant. And sometimes God has to shift to see who's the real remnant and who's just here for the hype. Uh, why why y'all quiet here today? Gideon had to get rid of more than half his army. God, help us here today. In order to get the victory. There was only about 100 out of the thousands of people that followed Jesus. There was only about 120 of them in the upper room. When the power of God hit them. And the Holy Spirit descended upon them. I want you to get that list, write it down, write, write, write it down, fold it up. And I want you to pass it to your right. And I, I need an usher to go get all those papers and bring them up to this altar. And I mean, you better write that list, speak it in tongues, talk it in the Holy Ghost. He said it takes a foolish thing to confound the wise. Are y'all hearing me here today? We put a hit list out on them today. I said angels are being dispersed to handle your list. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And after they bring down them papers, I want you to go into the biggest praise that you know how to if you believe it and you receive that this word is of God. And you believe that every name and everything you wrote down on that paper that God has already put it into motion. We're not waiting for it. I said the minute you wrote it down, God already put it into motion. Ooh. Come on, while they're getting the papers, come on, praise them over what you just wrote. Come on, see your loved one saved. See that name saved. See that name sitting right next to you. See the stronghold of the enemy letting them go. Come on, that's it. Come 
Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. How would you act if they was already here? How would you act if they were already off a of crack, already off the streets? How would you act if they was... You gotta let your praise show your faith. You gotta let your praise demonstrate your faith. Come on, get it quickly, get it quickly. We're gonna pray it a little bit. I feel the Holy Ghost moving. We're gonna press in today. The devil is defeated in this place. I said the devil is defeated in this place in every area of your life, in your finances, in your family, in your marriage. He is defeated. Bring me what you have. Bring me what you have. Bring me what you have. If I got some crazy believers, I need you to testify to at least five folks and tell them my family members just got saved. Tell them. Tell them my family members just got saved. Tell them they just went down to the altar. Come on. Tell them they just went down to the altar. You ain't lying. They on the altar right now. Come on, tell them my family member just went down to the altar. My lover, my son just went down to the altar. My unsaved husband just went down. I wish I had some help. Tell them they just went down to the altar. So you wait for a certain structure, but the Holy Ghost said, just follow him, follow him, follow him. Testify, tell somebody, my loved one just went down to the altar. I feel this thing this morning, man. I'm glad I ain't got to sit down because I feel fire all down in my bones this morning. thing because in about 15 20 minutes past we're gonna pray because that's what I've been feeling on me the spirit of prayer for us to really press in and, and as I on on uh, on yesterday I, I began to ask the Lord, what would he want me to teach y'all this morning? He said, I don't want you to get a message together today. And he just took me to a couple of scriptures. I want you to proclaim just a handful of things in the atmosphere. As a prophetic voice, I just want you to declare a couple of things. So that the people can understand what is taking place while they're here in my presence. There are angels being released at 
the address of every individual. I wish I had some help here. I wish I had some help. I said, I see angels being released at every single address of individual that you put on this paper today. The day is over of you coming to church, going through the same thing day after day, going through pure hell at home. Because if anybody can put you through, loved ones can put you through. But today we decree and we declare that they have been brought down to the altar. In every stronghold, every demonic force, every generational curse is being destroyed off of their lives now. Stop, stop, stop. I just need 15 minutes of that. Everyone that walked through that door this morning, God had preordained for you to be here this morning. Because today when we cross over, the Holy Ghost began to tell me while I was getting ready, he said, tell the people that they are crossing over without any residue. Watch this. Without any residue of where they came from. God help us here. See, see, you see, and I, I, I gotta read the scripture in Exodus 14 because when, 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 when God allowed the people of Israel to cross over, he had to allow them to cross over on dry ground. And past times, because, you know, you, 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 you didn't thrust into it and, 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 and you, you wasn't all the way there, that, that, that when you would get somewhere, it always seemed like you would always track mud from your past into your future. Y'all not hearing me here today. He said, but today the mud has been pushed off of your feet. And when you cross over on this morning, I am bringing you over without any residue, any sign of where you came from. They're not going to be able to tell that I brought you. Look at somebody and say, no residue. Pastor Gray, this this this, this blessed me because when I when I looked at Exodus the 14th chapter at verse 15 and it said, And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. 19. And the angel of the Lord went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud and a darkness to them, but it gave light by night to the people of Israel so that the one came not near to the other all night long. My God. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to back strong, east wind, all that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea, watch this, upon 
dry ground. And the waters were a wall unto them on the right and on the left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea. Even all of Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. The Bible said that the people of Israel, the same thing that caused them darkness, he said it became a light unto the people of Israel. He said the cloud moved from in front to the back. And the Holy Ghost began to say, he said there are times in your walk when it seems like you can't see God. You can't find God. You feel like there's nothing leading you. You're all by yourself. He said, but those are the times that I am not leaving you, but I have switched to move behind you so that the enemy can lose trace. He said to tell the people that today the enemy is losing your scent. He is losing. blinding you to the enemy's senses and if the devil is foolish enough to follow you into this next level God had to let him be hot on your trail so that God can take you into a place that's deep enough to drown him Why y'all quiet? Why y'all quiet? Okay, let me tell you again what he said. He said, God had to launch you into a deep enough place. It had to be deep enough in order to drown out the enemy. So let me tell you, the devil was a fool to follow you to prayer this morning. <laughs> I said, the devil was a fool to follow you to prayer this morning. Because God said, I'm about to take you to the deep places. I'm about to take you to a place where the devil's going to be drowned out. He's going to lose his power. He's losing his authority. Every stronghold that he had in your life is being destroyed right now. Okay, look at this, look at this. We're getting ready, we're getting ready to pray. The devil was a fool to follow you here today. Verse 24, bless me. He said, and it came to pass that in the morning, in the morning watch, the Lord looked upon the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of the fire and of cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians and took off their chariot wheels that they drave heavily so that the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. And when I had looked up the morning watch of the Lord, it said that the morning watch, it says the fourth watch of the four watches of the night were divided into three hours each. And it said that this particular morning watch was between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. Okay, why y'all looking like y'all don't know what I'm trying to say? Maybe you haven't looked at your clock lately, but this is the hour that God is about to trouble your enemies. See, 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 wait, 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 wait. Oh, man, you just. <laughs> he could have called 7 o'clock prayer. He could have called 6 o'clock prayer. Some of y'all been outside since 4, 3.30, the night before, and you don't understand why you felt this drive. He said between 3 and 6 was the time that God looked down on the people of Israel's enemies. So he said, while you're here in prayer, 
and your enemies are asleep by the time they wake up. Are y'all hearing me this morning? Watch it. He said, by the time your enemies wake up, the situation that they thought was there is about to change into your favor. Slap somebody high five and say, it's my hour. I just need somebody to believe it today. I just need somebody to believe it's their hour. Two more scriptures. Two more scriptures. The enemy you see today, you will see no more. <laughs> I said, the enemy you see today, the Holy Ghost said, you will see no more. I got to read you this other scripture out of Ezra. I got to read this to you. Yeah, let's go to Ezra first. Jesus. How many people feel this thing turning in your spirit? You just feel it. How many people feel the enemy losing his grip on everything that belongs to you? I'm in the right watch. Tell him I'm in the right watch. By the time you get home today, by the time the sun fully rises, your victory will be in your possession. By the time you get to work, your victory will fully be in your possession. By the time you get back home, your victory will be in your possession. By the time you leave this prayer, your victory will be in your possession. Woo. You see, because, because, because when, 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 when we was, uh, we've been talking about the kingdom for the last couple of weeks and, and, and understanding our place and our authority in the kingdom of God and that we don't have to work as hard as we've been working God brought us into a place of rest and into a peaceful place because when, 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 when I had went when I had went and I, I, I had read this a little bit more in detail and God began to take me back and I'm not I can't go into it today but he began to take me back to Genesis and he began to say that before he spoke a word, watch this, the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. He said that there was stuff and when you look up the, 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 the meaning of, that, that God made, there's only two places that he created. He created man and he created the animals. But everywhere else in Genesis, the first and second chapter, it talks about that God made this and God made this and God made that. And, and, and when you look up the definition of the word made, it means that he put back together. Made means put back together. In other words, it was something in existence, but it was not put back together. 
In other words, the, the material for the stuff was there. The ingredients for the stuff was there. But it had to be put together. The Bible says that by the word of God, the worlds were formed. Form means connected. Look at it when you get home. And God began to say, he said that everything that has your name on it, he said, I don't have to create anything else for you. Watch this. Because you cannot see it, does not mean it does not exist. Okay, okay. Because you cannot touch it, does not mean that it is not there. Creation is voice activated. Woo. There are things that have to be pulled out of darkness. That's why faith is not the seen, faith is the unseen. It is the substance of things hold for the evidence of things not seen. He says, so the fact that you can believe me for it is evidence that it belongs to you. I would never give you faith to believe me for something that you did not already possess. Oh man, why y'all quiet? Why? Y now y'all gonna make me preach. So, so, so you sitting there saying, oh, it's just a crazy dream I have to do this. And I just desire to do this. And I desire to live. No, no, no. That, that's not crazy. God's trying to show you all your stuff that he already created before the foundation of the world that has your name on it. You just got a voice activated and pull it out of darkness. So watch this, watch this. The faith, God help us here today, that you have is an indication of the stuff that you possess. <laughs> God would not put the desire for the thing in your spirit if the provision for the thing was not already manifested. See, 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 <laughs> see what, 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 what he had, man, I don't, y'all, y'all, what, what he, <laughs> what he had begin to show me, pastor, he said that, 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 that we have the raw material, and I'm going to show you, everything, the Bible said that gifts and calling comes without repentance. So before the foundation of the world, you was already what God ordained for you to be. Even when you was a big old head demon, doing whatever you was doing in the world, watch this. Your gifts and all the calling that God had for you, it was the raw material in darkness. You are in sin, in darkness. The raw material was darkness. But through your confession of Jesus Christ, see, light only became light, watch this, because that is what God spoke it to be. Although it was dark, the ingredients for light was always present. So all the stuff that we go through is our raw material. You are already the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher, the missionary, the man or woman of God that God has called you to be. The word raw means uncooked, unprocessed, undone. 
And what God has to do to pull your materials together, he has to put you through a process. God, why have I been going through like I've been going through? Why does it seem like every time I get ready to step into something new, something always pops up? God said, I am allowing your rawness to become cooked. I'm allowing your stuff to come together. You are only what you are because, watch this, you did not allow your experiences to stay raw. The way some folks have affected you, if you can let those things stay raw, it would have killed you and killed other folks too. But because you took that experience and you said, I speak this experience into an anointing. I command this experience to break strongholds off of the lives of those who are in need. God took your raw experience and made it into a yoke destroying anointing. definition they have for raw was a sore uncovered or unhealed <laughs> he said a sore uncovered unhealed now I'm going to say this and we're going to go the only thing that happens he said because when, you, when, when, when you're in that raw stage and everybody's looking at you for what you are now. Watch this. The only person that can see your stuff in its full flourishing is you. Although things were in darkness, God was able to see the finished work because he was the creator of it all. So the Holy Ghost began to speak to me. You cannot speak what you see. You got to speak who God called you to be. Watch this. God did not look at darkness and call it darkness. It was obvious it was darkness. But he had to look at darkness and say, light come forth. There's some stuff you're getting ready to look at this morning. I don't care if you see poverty. You're going to say prosperity. Come forth. Healing. Watch this. Watch this. I'm almost there. So the only person we're going to Make sure you had Ezra, because we're about to read Ezra. The only person during the time when you're in your raw stage that can see the finished product is you. And people don't understand how you can shout. How do you keep on coming to church? How do you keep on showing up for five o'clock in the morning? prayer and you going through all that stuff because they don't understand that God has shown you all your stuff look at somebody and say I can see all my stuff you will be criticized when you're the only person that can see your stuff Joseph had a dream. God showed him his stuff, but his stuff had not yet manifested. 
And when he started telling other folks, his brother, his father, they all laughed at him. Matter of fact, his brothers wanted to kill him. They didn't understand that God had gave him a glimpse of all. You are about to see all. If you didn't see it before today, get ready. I'm about to open your eyes and you're going to see all your... Ooh, get the power of God's going to hit back there in a couple of seconds. Look at somebody and say, I'm about to see all my stuff. Come on, see it, see it, see it. See it. See you walking in healing. See you walking in prosperity. See you standing before millions. See it. See you're a successful entrepreneur. See your stuff. Because when you see your stuff, you can find your praise. See, that's a sign of somebody who just got a glimpse. The devil didn't want you to get here this morning to get a glimpse of your stuff. Because he knew once you saw it, you praise God harder than you did before. But it's too late. I didn't walk through the door. I can see my stuff. Now, you see, see, now watch this. So you got some folks sitting next to you saying, why are they making all that noise? It's too early. I didn't even have my cup of coffee yet. Well, if you've been through what I've been through, you've been making noise too. If you was in hell like I was in hell and God showed you your victory, you'll be making noise. If you saw what I saw, you'd be yelling too. Listen, listen, hold on. I'm a sports fan. Sit down. And, and, and I ain't never seen and went to a stadium where my favorite player hit a base hit or my favorite basketball player made a shot that the whole stadium said, that's nice, God bless him. Even when you at home watching it on television, you up yelling at the TV like they can hear you. That's how radical you gotta be about your praise when you see your stuff. Now, now listen, now, now, don't nobody complain or say nothing to the people in the stadium for making too much noise. Have you ever went to a game and you got to the stadium kind of late and you're not quite in the stadium, but you're going in and you hear an uproar of noise? And the noise makes you say, what's going on, rushing to your seat? You got to make the kind of noise that causes the folks around you to say, what did they just see? I don't know what God just showed them, but it must have been something great.
fire! Y'all gotta be nice. I gotta read Ezra. I gotta read Ezra. I gotta read Ezra. I gotta read Ezra. Y'all are crazy this morning. I want y'all to know. I don't know what y'all have for breakfast. Y'all, I just feel something. We got a crazy remnant in the house that don't mind making noise for the Holy Ghost. So that means if you sitting there and you too sedity and too deep, go ahead and stay in your deep sedity state. But once God shows me all my stuff, all the stuff I've been going through and now God shows me what I'm about to walk into. See, you, 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 when you leave this prayer today, you can't leave this prayer in a somber state. Because when that person's team wins. You ever watch the news? Watch this. You ever watch the news? And I'm talking about them crazy fans that paint their face. The news person is trying to talk and someone so and they be in the back. Yeah, baby, yeah. They jumping on the camera. Yeah, yeah. See, that's how you got to be about God. That's how, that's how you got to be about yourself. Yeah! Yeah, baby, yeah! Y'all praise God too quick. You got to be excited. Yeah! Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Some of y'all probably were, were the ones I saw on TV. Trying to disguise yourself with some paint in your face. I mean, they go, <laughs> they leave their aunt. That's how you gotta leave this prayer today. We not leaving quiet, we leaving loud today. stay up all night to come here and be quiet and look at me. You didn't drive two and three hours just to come and look at me. Look at somebody say, I came to see my stuff. Woo. Now look at this. Ezra. Man. Ezra, I got to read this last piece. My book is closed. That's it. The fifth chapter, I'm going to jump because I, I just got to hit the main points because we're about to do some warring in here this morning. The devil is in trouble. Chapter 5, I'm going to read one verse, two verses, and then we're going to jump to chapter 6. Ezra is about the rebuilding of the temple. They started the work of rebuilding, and then 
Jealousy crept in and they were forced to stop in chapters four and the earlier part of five because they were making progress too fast. Now I can't get stuck there, but you feel that, right? Then the people of Israel write a letter to King Darius because the work had stopped for a number of years because a letter was written to the king saying if you allow this, then they'll be too strong. So he suspended the work. Now King Darius is on the scene. This letter is being written to him from God's chosen. Verse 13 says, but in the first year of Cyrus, the king of Babylon, the same king Cyrus, made a decree to build this house. He's telling them this. Verse 17, now therefore, if it seem good to the king, let there be a search made in the king's treasure house. which is there in Babylon, whether it be so, that a decree was made of Cyrus the king to rebuild this house of God at Jerusalem and let the king send his pleasure to us concerning this matter. Watch this. Then Darius the king made a decree and search, and search was made in the house of the rolls where the treasure was laid up. Watch this. And there was found a place. God help me hear somebody. Verse 3. In the first year of Cyrus, the king of the saying, Cyrus, the king made a decree concerning the house of God at Jerusalem. Let the house be built and the place where they offered sacrifices and let the foundations thereof be strongly laid. And it goes on to give you the size of what it's going to be. Verse 8. Moreover, I decree what ye shall do to the elders of these Jews. For the building of this house of God, listen, that of the king's goods, even unto the tribute beyond the river, for with expenses be given unto these men, that they be not hindered. It gets better. Verse 9, and that which they have need of, and he goes on to name the bullocks, the rams, the last part of that verse, that which they have need of, let it be given them. Day by day, without fail. All this time, watch this. The enemy has been trying to stop up your daily supply. After this morning, you will never be short of money. You will never be short of resources. You will never be short of help. For the king is making a decree that everything you need day by day shall be given to you without watch this I don't think y'all understand Do you understand that this decree was written long time ago? He told them, go search the book and you'll see the rights that we have been given. Some of y'all need to go search the book so you can know the rights that you have been given. You've been given a right to be healed and not sick. 
You've been given a right to be the head and not the tail. You've been given a right to be above and not beneath. Look at somebody and say, that's my right. And tell them every day, that's my right. If you sick in this place today, your body is about to be healed. Tumors are about to disappear. Gross are about to leave. High blood pressure is about to be regulated. Cancer is about to die. Diabetes is about to dry up. Last part. Last part. What God, man, oh man, is about to do in your life, the devil is not going to be able to do anything but what? Watch. That's it. Watch this. Verse 11. Also, it ain't over, he said. I have made a decree that whosoever shall alter this word, my God, let timber be pulled down from his house and being set up, let him be hung therein. He said, this word that God is releasing to you and the third hour watch at five o'clock in the morning, he said, I'm sending a notice out through all of hell. You better not touch one word that has been spoken over their life. You better leave every word alone for they shall come forth as pure gold. Look at your neighbor and say, keep your mouth off my word. Keep your mouth off my word. Don't mess with my word. You may not like me, but leave my word alone. God said to tell somebody the plan has not changed. Last verse. Last verse. As if that wasn't enough. And the God that have caused his name to be dwelled there, destroy all kings and people that shall put to their hand to alter and destroy this house of God, which is of Jerusalem. Now, this is going to make you shout. I, Darius, the present king, have made a decree. Let it be done with speed. I don't think y'all read that. You didn't read it. He said, let it be done with I am not talking about a word that's going to come to pass in two years, five years, six years. I'm talking about a right now word. So listen. When? Thank 
you pass it. When we get ready to start praying, and God said, This thing that I have decreed today, do you understand that you're leaving out of here with it? Listen, we're, we're, we are walking out of here. The king has made his decree that everything the enemy has held up and tried to stop us and hinder us, he is removing all hindrances. The path has been made clear. Make them wealthy with speed. Save their household with Sing. Heal their bodies with Sing. Bring them into purpose with Time has just sped up on your behalf and court cases that were held up God said it's coming to pass with speed I want you to free your hands because we're about to start praying and warring and I want you to speak it command it ordain it decree it because the decree has gone out that provision for today is already met Stop worrying about the bills. Stop worrying about this. Stop worrying about how this is going to work out. He said, I've made provisions for you already. Listen, you can find you a spot, whether it's on the wall, if it's on the floor, if it's in the side, if it's on the front. Find you a spot where you can really pray and pull down the power of God and we're going to begin to open our mouths up and begin to cry out to God for the city, for our families, for our breakthrough, for our new season. Are you hearing me here, somebody? For revival, for an outpouring of his spirit. I wish I had some help. I wish I had some help. I wish I had some help. When I count the three, I want you to begin to lift up your voices. Now, if you get on your knees, don't you fall asleep. Don't let the enemy trick you. Because y'all know it's early in the morning. Don't be tricked getting on your knees resting. This is not the prayer for you to rest. This is the prayer for you to pace. Sometimes you got to pace back and forth. Are you hearing me here, somebody? You got to walk into that new thing. One, Father, we thank you that as we put on our garments of war, and we put on our garments of praise. We thank that you have given us the authority to pull down, to tear up, to build up. To Holy Spirit, as we use this weapon that you've given us, our mouth, our tongue, we decree and speak into the atmosphere. For you've given us the authority, God, to speak and decree a thing. For the king has already made his decree. And today we walk in our power. We walk in our authority. Come on three, begin to lift up those voices. Begin to make your petition known to God. Come on, begin to cry out. Hold the music for a second. God said he wanna hear your prayers. He wanna hear your prayer. He wanna hear you pray. He don't want you hiding behind the music. He said open up your mouth. And today you gotta begin to cry out. Come on, begin to lift up your voice. Begin to make your petition known. Jesus, we call on you today, God. We call on the only name we know. We cry out today, God. We thank you for the word. We lift up our voice before you. For you made us for a time such as this. We thank you, God.
that you called us to stand in the gap. And today we stand in the gap. We sound the alarm. We blow the trumpet that this is the day of victory. This is the day of victory. For we know no defeat. We thank you, Holy Ghost, that everything that you've done, you said he that had begun a good work, you are faithful to finish it. And we praise you for it. And we magnify you for it. Come on, people of God, begin to lift up your voice. Begin to pray. Begin to make your petition known to God. Touch our spirits today, God. Renew us today, God. Put the right spirit in us, God. Oh, God. We cry out before you today. We yell before you today. We wail before you today. We travail before you today. We're like a woman that's pregnant, God. We travail in the spirit. We travail in the spirit. We moan in the spirit. We push in the spirit. Today we shall give birth to something fresh and something new. We give birth to a new revival in the city of Kansas. We thank you right now God that you're bringing us into a new place and a deeper depth God in the name of Jesus we come against the spirit of racism in the city God we bind racism up but God let unity be in the city let love be in the city in the name of Jesus come on somebody begin to pray as the Holy Ghost gives you utterance begin to pray as the Holy Ghost gives you utterance we speak and declare it in the name of Jesus. Come on, this is the hour of prayer. This is the hour of prayer. This is the hour of prayer. We release the Holy Ghost. We release the Spirit of God in the government. We pray for our president. We pray for Mr. Bush. Touch his mind, God. Let him not make decisions based upon his own knowledge. But God, give him divine wisdom. Give him divine knowledge. We pray for Dick Cheney, God. Touch his health, God. Give him a miracle in his body. Let him know that the doctors didn't do it. But let him know Jesus did it. We pray for revival in our country. We pray for revival in America, God. Don't let us become lax and comfortable. But God, stir up a hunger in America. Give us a desire for prayer. For prayer. For prayer. For prayer, God. Let us not become comfortable in Zion. Stir up America. Come on, somebody. Pray for our nation. Pray for the city. Pray for the government. Pray for our leaders. Come on, pray. Pray, 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 pray. This is the place where decisions are made in prayer. Things are changed in prayer. Powers are transferred in prayer. We stand in the gap. We stand on the wall. We're standing on the wall. We're standing on the wall. We stand on the wall for our nation. Let revival break out in our nation. Let it break out in the White House. Let it break out in the Congress. Let it break out in the Senators. Let revival break out. Huh? Let them put prayer back in the schools. Huh? Let them put prayer back in the schools. Huh? We speak prayer huh? back in every classroom huh? in America. Huh? We speak prayer huh? back into the classroom huh? of every room in America. Huh? We speak Bible time huh? in every classroom huh? in America. Huh? Come on, somebody pray. 
get them selfish prayers out the way. We praying for our country right now. We're in trouble, but the prayers of the righteous. Oh God. Come on, somebody travail. Come on, open up your mouths and cry out to him. Come on, somebody begin to cry out to him. Come on, make your petition known to him today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We release prayer back into our schools. We release prayer back into our schools. Let revival break out amongst the young people. Instead of bringing guns to school, let them bring Bibles to school. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We come against every drug addiction. In the name of Jesus. We bind up the spirit of alcoholism. In the name of Jesus. We come against generational curses. In the name of Jesus. Come on somebody, begin to cry out today. Begin to open up your mouth and travail. You got to travail today. Come on somebody, begin to pray. We pray, we pray. We pray. We pray we pray God we lift up our voices for you hear us today oh God in the name of Jesus we pray for our troops that are over in Iraq God keep them protect them cover them oh God we speak peace in the country of Iraq in the name of Jesus we speak Jesus in the country of Iraq in the name of Jesus let them know God that my heart Muhammad is not the way. Let them know that Jesus is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let revival break out overseas in Iraq, God. In the name of Jesus, we come against every false God in America. We come against every false idol in America. We come against the idol of wealth. We come against the idol of man. We come against the idol of things. We come against greed. In the name of Jesus, we call out to you today. We call out to you today. Come on, somebody begin to lift up your voice. Begin to cry out. Come on, somebody begin to work. It's time to go to work. It's time to lift up your voice and begin to stand in the gap. It's time to sound the alarm. It's time to blow the trumpet. Come on, somebody pray. Come on, somebody. Begin to lift up your voice. You got to get in your praying position. You got to get in your warring position. And come on, begin to go for it. Look at the Bashamna. Forget about your watch. Forget about where you are. We got a war in the Holy Ghost. We got a war for our nation. We got a war for our children. We got a war for our marriages. We got a war for our communities. We got a war for the church. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for revival breaking out. We pray for revival. We don't want to live in Azusa Street, but give us something greater than Azusa. Give us something greater than Azusa. Give us a fresh outpouring. Do something we ain't never seen before. Let us hear something we ain't never heard before until it gets the attention of every newspaper, until it gets the attention of seeing in pour it out to him 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 lift up your voice and begin to cry lift up your voice and to the hell Come on, I can't hear you today. Come on, lift up your voice. 
You got to be loud enough so the devil can hear you. Your prayer got to pierce the atmosphere. Your prayer got to pierce the atmosphere. You got to let it ring out. You got to cry out until you feel the shift. You got to cry out until you feel restoration. You got to cry out until you go from glory to glory, from praise to praise, from faith to faith. Lift up your voice and cry out. Come on, saints. Come on, saints. Just a little bit further. Come on, don't get tired and weary. Don't look at your neighbor. Don't look up at me. This is the most important part of the morning. It's time to call out to the Lord. Come on, things change in prayer. Things happen in prayer. This is going to set the course of your day. You can't walk out on prayer. Lift up your voice. So you're standing on holy ground. You're standing on holy ground. That's it, man. That's it. That's it. Come on, you're standing on holy ground. Take off your shoes. I'm anointing your feet today. I'm anointing your feet today. That every place the sole of your feet touch, it shall be decreed as blessed. Oh, God, we lift up the loved ones today. We call them name by name. God, touch Anthony. Touch Dennis. God, touch. Touch Carolyn. We lift them up before you, God. Touch Tanya, touch Daniel, touch God, touch Patty, touch Mark, touch Daryl, touch Vicky, touch Calvin, touch, touch Joyce, touch God. Come on, come on, give Dustin some more volume. I can't hear him. Turn him up. Touch God. Touch Scott, touch Vivian, touch Rob, touch Jimmy. Come on, somebody. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Touch him, God. Name by name. Touch Bill. Touch Susie. Touch Carrie Ann. Touch Kimberly, God. Touch her. Touch her. Save her for real, God. Come on, Dustin, play it. The anointing is on you, man. 
Touch George. Touch Tracy. Come on, begin to call that name out. Call that name out into the atmosphere. Help is being released. Is God, the Wilsons, the Strongs, the Jenkins, the Boyds, the Bells, the Browns, the Carters, the Cox. Oh God, touch them. Come on, somebody. Play with me just two more minutes. begin to pray I feel something happening come on call out their names call out their names us now, oh, yeah. oh Jesus, oh 